want to benefit the communities. They want to have an impact in the communities. Uh, and, and by the bank making those pitches, uh, explaining what they need and how they will, uh, uh, how that how that investment translates into benefits for the communities is a key component of the fund and something the advisory committee is going to be looking at very closely how the investments affect the uh, communities. All right, thank you both. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, our next caller appears to be Peter Lenmar of Afro American Newspaper. Uh, yeah, hi, it's P.K. Semler of Afro-American Newspaper in Baltimore. Um, um, my question is, am I right in hearing that there's already, if there's 10 to 1 leverage, there's already a billion dollars in the fund, and will this go to something that is desperately needed in these communities of minority banks, uh, specifically food deserts, such as we see in Baltimore and other urban areas? You know, it, can the community have their voice in where these funds are invested in and also will there be a, a community reinvestment act guideline in these funds also those banks are not participating yeah great great question Peter. so the, the way it's going to be structured is that the community itself will not be able to make a direct pitch now we will have some community representation on the advisory committee for the fund what the community activists and and uh, groups can do is basically approach minority defaultary institutions and CDFIs in their areas and say, hey, listen, we could really benefit from opening up, you know, a chain of, of, of you know, in your example uh, with the food deserts, a chain of grocery stores that are going to be, you know, bring healthy, uh, um, um, you know, vegetables, whatever it is maybe that they're focused on and, and offerings to, 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 to this neighborhood. And then they'll, they'll fix the census track, et cetera, et cetera. They can work with the, with the MDI and CDFI to, create a business proposal uh, and, and, you know, hopefully find grocers that are willing to do this or able to do this. And then they, the, the banks will be able to pitch back to the fund. So, yes, I would say absolutely that it will be open to that. Um, again, you know, depends on how it's structured, et cetera. But it wouldn't be necessarily that the community would come to the fund directly. If this is really a, an investment fund, and it's focused on MDIs and CDFIs. So the communities can work through MDIs and CDFIs to get their um, uh, goals and the needs addressed uh, to the investment. And with respect to your second question on the CRA, banks will participate in this fund. Um, there will be some opportunities to um, to get CRA credit for the investment. And Brandon, I think we, we don't know more exactly how that will be structured. Maybe you can give a little bit more as Ashby's on the line. Yeah, Ashby's on the line. I'll let him take the CRA portion of that. And if you don't mind, to I'd like to add one more thing to the, the first part of that question. Go yeah, ahead. And, and Peter, as we're a real lawyer, the, the Brandon and I just play one on TV. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, uh, Madam Chairman. Uh, yes, the, the um, you know, many of the investments in, that the funds are going to be making, the funds are going to be making are, are going to be eligible for CRA, um, uh, depending upon the institution. Uh, that that uh, is, is investing, and, 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 and we think that there's a, 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 a very, very good chance that it would be subject, that it would be eligible for CRA credit, um, and uh, 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 depending again upon the, the institution uh, that is making the actual investment into the, uh, uh, the, the fund itself. Yeah, actually, it's a little bit of a case by case analysis based on assessment areas and other. That's areas. correct. Yes. But, uh, but the investments themselves are, are, are in a strong position to potentially receive CRA. That's correct. All right. And then as it relates to the first question, if you don't mind, you know, the reason that the chairman wanted to focus so intently on MDIs and CDFIs is because they live and work in the communities that you're talking about. Um, you know, I, I, I think of the work that, that Harbor Bank, and Betty can speak to this, has done in Maryland, um, you know, they understand the needs of the community. Their goal is to build out a community that, that's thriving. Uh, and and we, we feel like this capital coming from the fund, these investments coming from the fund, going to these banks that understand the needs of the communities they serve is so important uh, uh, and, and really gives us a chance to make an impact. That's why the anchor investors are so excited about the possibilities. 
Peter? Yeah, my last question, and this is a for-profit fund, correct? It is, it is for-profit, uh, but uh, we have been clear, and the anchor investors themselves have been clear, that uh, they want patient capital. Uh, we, the return on investments that we've been discussing with uh, uh, the anchor investors are in, in the uh, 1% to 2% range. Uh, you know, this is not designed to, to, to you know, mirror the S&P or try to, uh, you know, bring in 7 to 8% return. If it does that, that's great. But the goal here of these investors is to be patient uh, and, and to get a, a low to, to understand that these institutions need the equity, that the communities need these investments. Uh, it's not a focus on the return. It's a focus on the impact. Oh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, so I see nobody else in queue. One last opportunity for news media to uh, 